Hello and welcome. I'm Bill DeWeese, professional voiceover talent and voiceover career coach. I am here. This channel exists to help you to be a profitable voiceover talent. So grateful you've stopped by. I hope you will take a moment to hit the subscribe button. Also, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, family, relatives, coworkers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Today, let's talk about what's primary to the development of your career as a voiceover talent. That is, of course, your voice. I mean, it's your instrument, right? So it would uh, make sense that we would give it some time and attention and talk about how to take care of it. Now, as I was preparing to record this video, I realized I do have, I have some important things to share with you, but I have to be honest at the same time. And I really, I try hard to be uh, as transparent as I can be. So you understand uh, exactly where I'm coming from, where I'm going, how I feel about all of this, what my experiences have been, so that you can benefit from that as well. And the reality is I am not the poster boy for health and fitness. That might be apparent by watching the video. Uh, there was a time, you know, when I was, I was lean, mean, distance running, running marathons, all that kind of stuff. But as the years have gone by, and especially since COVID, I've packed on some extra weight, you know, and I'm now, I'm in my 60s, so there's things I have to deal with now that I didn't have to a few, year, few years ago. But a disclaimer up front is this. All that being said, I have my parents to thank for really, really good genes because regardless of what I allow to happen to me or how I take care or don't take care of myself, I remain in really, really good health. I mean, I just don't have any health concerns to speak of. And I can still, if I wanted to go out and run for a while, I could still do it even now. Um, so everybody's different. All that to say that, you know, you may be a little more sensitive to some things than me. There might be some things that I struggle with that you don't, which I think brings up a really important topic, uh, kind of a subtopic. And that is a lot of people, they like hard rules. You must do this. You must not do that. There are people who like to give those rules and tell people what they should do and what they shouldn't. And then there are those who like to receive the rules because it gives them, I think, a sense of security and control. They feel like they know what they should do. I'm not so much that way because I realize that there are some principles that guide matters of life, but also a lot of things are subjective and it varies from person to person. So I will share with you my experiences and some thoughts that I think that will help you. So with all of that said, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, number one, let's talk about, well, first of all, we'll talk about some prevention. Then we'll talk about things that you might be dealing with. And then I want to talk very specifically about what to do when you face issues, because issues do come up. So first of all, yeah, let's talk about prevention. What's the old saying? Was it was it Benjamin Franklin that, 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 that said this? Maybe not, but somebody very wise once said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And there will be times when it's you'll wake up and say, oh my gosh, my voice is gone or I'm sick or you know things that you have to deal with. But it's always good to be in prevention mode. Now, like I said, I'm not the poster boy for taking great care of myself, but there are some things that, that I know that I really do try to do. And one is I try to get plenty of sleep. I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> That's one thing I am pretty good at is getting plenty of sleep. If you're not well rested, it's going to make it difficult to function and stay healthy. All right. And I think you probably know that, but let it serve as a reminder. Number two, you need to hydrate. That's something else that I do very well. You want to make sure that you're drinking plenty of fluids and water and making sure that everything stays well lubricated. That's, that's very important. Uh, these next two, I'm not as good at, but I'm working on it. One is, is eating well. You know, if you, if you want to stay healthy, uh, let food be thy medicine. Another famous quote from a very wise person. Um, I don't always do that as I should, obviously. Uh, it is something I'm aware of and that I work at. Uh, my problem is like after eight o'clock at night, that's that, you know, that's, that's when I'm haunted by the things calling to me from, from my pantry. But, you know, I do, I, I eat lots of greens. I like vegetables. I like fruit and, you know, eating those kind of things can do nothing but to help you 
in terms of long-term long-term health. And then exercising, get out and, and doing things. Uh, you know, I used to run a lot up until just a few years ago, and that's something that I hope to get back into now that we're moved and we're settled into where we're at now uh, in the Cincinnati area. When the weather turns, uh, you know, I plan to get back into that because, again, eating and exercising and hydrating, all of those things again, will will help you to stay healthy and stay away from problems that you might get into. And besides just your voice, just generally, I understand that this is my career and it may or may not be for you at this point in time, but the reality is if we cannot physically function, we cannot produce. And I am keenly aware of that. Voiceover is is kind of, for me, it's like, it's like a high paid job. It's like being an attorney, uh, or a doctor in that it's a job, uh, it's a career, it's a business where I make a very good living, but it's dependent on me. I cannot outsource what I do to somebody else. If somebody wants to hire me for my voice, it has to be my voice. So I can't sell my business to somebody else. There's no equity in my voiceover business because it all hinges on me and you. So we must be able to stay at a place physically where we can function. Otherwise, we lose our ability to earn. You know, one of the, the common things that I deal with, and I think that a lot of people do, are allergies, seasonal allergies. That affects my voice, and this may be you as well, more than anything else. I have been a seasonal allergy sufferer, gosh, most of my adult life. Um, so the way I deal with that is primarily through, I, I take Zyrtec on a daily basis. It's a tw every 24 hour over the counter medication. And I've used, I've tried Claritin and you know, others for me that works best for me. I don't know that there's a best is only what works best for you. So you might want to experiment. Uh, but I pretty much have to take it year round because uh, fall, spring, and even this winter, my allergies for some odd reason have been really bad. A lot of it probably because we moved to a different region of the country. So I'm exposed to different things than I, than I was before. Uh, but with allergies, you know, trying to stay away from the source of issues, uh, trying to possibly getting an air filtration system for your home or just you can get like a room sized air filtration system, which can help keep one maybe in your office, in your studio. So these are little things that you can do to kind of mitigate the bad stuff that may happen. But also food can create issues when it comes to allergies. So, you know, be aware of the things. Be very mindful of what it is that affects you. How do you feel after you eat or drink something? Do you notice that perhaps you feel a little more sluggish or that you get begin to get congested or maybe a buildup of phlegm or just things that make it difficult to function? And sometimes just being mindful of those things, maybe keep a little bit of a journal or a log uh, so that make a note when you notice that you eat or drink something that has a negative effect on you and you can begin to either maybe cold turkey, stop eating or drinking that or wean yourself off of that. So allergies can be a major thing, at least, at least for many of us. Now, there are rules that many folks like to share pertaining to what you should or should not drink and how it affects your voice and voiceover. Uh, I don't abide by most of those rules. I mean, I do think you need to hydrate, uh, but I'll, I'll share with you how I approach things and then you can decide what works best for you. And I hope you'll make that decision based on your own personal experience. Take very few things at face value. You really have to kind of vet these things out yourself and try them out in your own life and see how they work. One, one of the big rules that I hear is do not drink coffee. Well, let me just tell you, if I didn't drink coffee, I would not have a voiceover career. I am powered, powered by coffee, specifically Dunkin' Donuts coffee, just a personal favorite. You may respond well to Starbucks. Doesn't really matter. Whatever works well for you. Uh, lately, I've been into Meyer, which is based out of Michigan there in the North Midwest. I don't know where else they may or may not be. They have a uh, house blend uh, or a house coffee called Michigan Cherry, which has become my absolute favorite, which is neither here nor there. That's just a little side note, a little bonus for you here on this video. Um, but for me, what coffee does, yeah, I like the caffeine. It makes me alert. You know, I love all that. Uh, but what it does is it keeps my, my, my mouth and my throat clear. And, you know, I deal with a lot of sinus type issues, which I have most of my life. And so when I drink hot coffee, it just kind of cleans everything out and makes it easier for me to function. And the warm liquid loosens things up. Now, for you, hot tea may work really well. When I drink hot tea, and I like hot tea, uh, but it creates, I get mouth noise. I feel this like dehydration on my tongue when I drink hot tea, 
and I, I get a noticeable difference in mouth noise. Why is that? I don't know. Maybe my body chemistry is different from yours or somebody else's. But find what works well for you. But I do find that a hot liquid for me, coffee works well. Another rule I've, I've heard often is don't drink milk. Uh, and I understand why that is, because that can create phlegm and such. Um, I have used milk as actually to help me in voiceovers. Uh, and now I really drink mostly almond milk when I have milk. I, I've moved uh, away from dairy, not so much for my voice, but for just general health reasons, which I don't need to get into right now. But what I l do like and what I've liked about milk is that when I'm working on a long project, something that has like a thick, you know, something has a, a thicker uh, consistency to it soothes my throat. And if I'm working on doing two, three, four hours of narration in a day and my voice is tired, I found that milk, uh, and again, you may want to try like an almond or an oat, uh, oat milk or something like that, but something that has a, a thicker consistency to it, for me, brings relief and it helps me to continue moving on. So a mixture of that, occasionally with some hot coffee, back and forth between the two. Again, it may not work for you, it may bring disastrous results. That's why you have to check this out yourself and test and see what works for you. But for me, it works It works very well. Now, the reality is that you're going to face at some point in time an issue with your health and specifically with your voice. Um, and sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. It's just, it happens. You get sick, uh, you overstrain your voice accidentally, and it just becomes difficult to, to speak like you normally would, and, and it's, it's noticeable to you. But here's the thing. Here's the thing to keep in mind, and I say this from having many years of experience doing this. You probably don't sound nearly as bad slash different to you as you do to other people. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't need to do anything about it and just carry on as usual, but be aware of that, that it will seem more exaggerated to you, most likely, than it will be to anyone else. And the reason I say that is because over the years, here's the strategy that I use. When my voice, you know, my voice goes bad for whatever reason, I may, maybe I'm dealing with a sinus infection or a raspiness, uh, and I've done everything that I know to do of whatever medications, food, hot liquids, I've done everything that I know to do. Maybe gargle with salt water is another, that, but that's more of a longer term, you know, healing. I don't know about that in terms of immediate relief, but hey, try it out. Um, when I have an issue where I think that my voice has been affected pretty negatively, what I will do is I will record a sample and send it to my client, which brings up an important point. Communication with client is always key. Don't decide to shut down that day and then not, not update your clients on the status of their projects and what's going on. That would be a mistake. But what I do is I send them, a, I'll just record a short sample. I'll send it to them and say, hey, uh, I think my, you know, I've, to me, my voice sounds a little bit different today because I'm dealing with a sinus infection or, or whatever the case may be. You don't need to go into, you know, too much information. I want to make sure that you hear it before I record today and to make sure that you're okay with it. If not, I'll just delay it until tomorrow. That will, it does a couple of things. It really builds goodwill with your clients because they know that you're treating them like a partner. You're not blowing them off. You're, you're not uh, going dark and not communicating. You're actually communicating and giving them a chance to give you feedback. Nine times out of 10 when I've done that, clients say, you're fine, go ahead, to my shock and dismay, which just goes to show you that you don't sound nearly as bad to other people as you may to yourself. Uh, but there have been occasions where they'll say, you know what, hey, just take a day and let's just you know, see if you feel and sound better tomorrow. So communicating with clients is an absolute must. And he, the bottom line for me is this, when it comes to this kind of, I, I don't obsess over this. I don't obsess over every little thing that I eat or everything that I drink. I'm mindful, I'm aware, and I do the things that I believe helps me perform the best, but I don't expect that it works the same for everybody. And um, you can sometimes you can lose track of the, 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 the forest for the trees and get so focused on the minutia of what's going on, of exactly what I'm drinking or exactly what I'm eating, or did I do this exercise or that exercise, that you're not focusing on creating and delivering a great product. And you don't want to get sidetracked from that. And again, chances are your client will never know the difference. 
but you do want to take care of yourself so that you can continue to function and perform and be profitable, which again is my mission here is to help you to be profitable. So I hope you find my perspective and um, and you may or may not agree with all that I've said, which is totally fine. I, I'm, I'm not saying that this is the way it is. I'm saying that this is the way it works for me. And I'm urging you to try and work out what works best for you. The one thing I will say that is is a must do, and that is to communicate with your clients. If you want to build a successful voiceover career, you must learn to communicate and stay in touch with your clients because that will build credibility and a relationship with them faster than anything else. And again, above all, I want you to be profitable. So thanks for checking out the video. I appreciate it. I hope you'll go into the comment section leave a comment, leave a feedback, share the things that you do that work best for you and check out all of the resources. I've got a lot of links there with resources to help you be successful in your voiceover journey. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you soon.